Hi, I'm Jamie Longo, and I'm going to give you a short tour today of the Tree Savers Lab. Uh, we're not actually up for production yet, but since we're preparing to receive our beetles next week, we're trying to do the best we can to give you an overview of what to expect from us. So just to give a brief idea here, these are our schedules and our egg sheets. Once we start our ova positioning jars, which will keep track of our male and females and what kind of eggs they produce, this is what we can expect to see in the beginning. We'll have our date and our recorded sex ratio. We always have 10 female and 5 male per jar. Um, we get a different amount of dead per week, which usually we try to keep low, obviously. So we keep track of which ones had a problem, and we can go back and retrace what could have caused a death in the jar. Um, these are our egg numbers from last March. This was with my lab, Forever Green Environmental Services. So this year we're expecting to have even better results than we did then. Um, here's a few of our marketing materials. We did create a business card. This is uh, my fellow employee, Amanda Wisner, and um, her card. And we created on the back a way to basically distinguish a hemlock tree from other evergreens out there and to also point out the hemlock woolly adelgid. There's some basic facts here, so if you're ever interested in referring a friend, then uh, this would be a good, good tool to help them. Over here, we have our first rearing cage. And inside are the hemlock branches infested with hemlock woolly adelgid. We roll this back, and this is going to prevent our beetles from escaping when we have them next week and we reach in with our hands, preferably with gloves, and you basically can just maneuver the branches around and you'll see the beetles. At the end of the season we actually will be taking these out from the tips here and all of this material here is going to contain every rearing life stage of the uh, the Sassagesimnus suge beetle. So those, the ST beetles, we're going to call them for short, are going to be coming out with their eggs, larvae, and pupa that may not have completely developed yet. And one of our shipping practices here is to put them in specially marked containers. Um, this is really, in this case, we're actually going to have to take each hemlock branch out of this cage here, and we're going to have to tap them lightly, and all of the beetles are going to come out underneath. And then we're going to hand count them and over here, this is how we keep track. And of course, it's important to know the males from the females. That's why I have the distinguishing stickers. Um, that's so that we can keep track for our jars. But as we do that, then we can take the beetles off of that, put it on new material for you. If you have an area where you do not want to um, release on infested hemlock branches, we have another method. And that's this, where we use a straw material and that straw material is biodegradable and you can put that right on your trees instead of the infested hemlock. So um, just so that you can tell here, we use this to open up the egg sacs. In here there are several hundreds of eggs and probably in the realm of like 20 per thing when they're really 20 per puff and then you can zero in through the microscope. Unfortunately, we can't show you what it looks like, but an adult adelgid probably has about 20 eggs in each one of these sacks right now. So let's take a walk into the lab and you can see our temperature control settings and our jar setup. Here's gonna be our jar rack. And let's see, here you can see our temperature settings Ideally, they should be between 76 and 79 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. And we also should keep the humidity anywhere between 47 and 55 degree, uh, percent humidity. And this is for optimal breeding temperatures. Down below, you can see some of our pick food. This is going to be what we put in the jars because they have the highest density of hemlock woolly adelgid. So these particular spear shapes are going to be perfect for us to put about four of those per jar and out of these four twigs about this big we're going to expect to get between 500 and 600 eggs per jar per week. This is how we distinguish food uh, from location that we collected it. If anything ever ends up contaminated then we can locate that by one box and then make sure that we aren't shipping contaminated materials. 
And this is the line of our boxes, the first one. There are several. We're expecting five weeks of activity from egg to adult. So we're going to try to go through here and hopefully have a section per week to be shipping out. I'll just let Amanda pan around the entire room so you can see about how many pages we're expecting to have running at a time. And we do have temperature controls all over the lab because it's very important that we keep track of that. And this is about a month's worth of pick food along the wall here. We have to have them a month in advance so that we have a chance for the Haemophilus adelgia to lay eggs because one of the most important parts about biological control with the ST beetle is that they will not reproduce without woolly adelgid eggs. So if they have woolly adelgid eggs, they lay their own eggs. That's why that's so important. 